There's actually 10 different authors for Genesis. Moses did not write Genesis. He never claimed to write Genesis. He edited it together centuries later from eyewitness accounts, people who were there on the scene, all eyewitness accounts. Moses just edited it together. You are right. He stitched it together. I'll show you. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. God said, God saw, God divided, God called. Notice the word God is used in Genesis chapter 1, 31 times. It's only got 31 verses, but he used the word God 31 times. When you go to chapter 2, in the day that the Lord God made the earth and the heavens, and the Lord God said, and the Lord God formed, and the Lord God, wait, wait, wait. It changed names. Is it God or the Lord God? See, God had to write chapter 1. He was the only one who would know those things. Nobody else could possibly know. And God wrote chapter 1. And then I think Adam wrote chapter 2. Now we know that Mark chapter 12, Jesus told us in the book of Moses about the God, the bush and God spake to him, said, I'm the God. So we know that the Exodus story, the talking in the bush came from the book of Exodus. So the, Jesus clearly taught that Moses wrote Exodus. Okay. When you're, who wrote Genesis? Well, if brethren dwell together, one of them die and have no child, her husband's brother shall go in and take her, perform the duty of a husband. That's in Deuteronomy. When you read Jesus talking about it in Luke 20, Moses wrote that if a man dies, his brother should raise up seed to the brother. So we know that Moses wrote Deuteronomy. There's evidence all through the Bible that Moses actually wrote Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. He was there when it happened. He was the eyewitness. He's the guy leading him out of Egypt, okay? Moses, as an Egyptian prince, would have had access to all the most ancient sources in the royal libraries of Egypt. He wrote Exodus through Deuteronomy, but he only edited or collected Genesis from 10 eyewitness accounts. It's easy to see where he stitched them together, Bart. These are the generations of the heavens and the earth. Whenever you see that phrase, these are the generations of, that's somebody signing off. That was God signing off. Okay, chapter 1 up through verse 4, God wrote that. See, Moses, 16 or 8, whenever he lived, uh, 2,500 years after the creation, he took the Genesis accounts probably from the library of Egypt that were right there. They had all the ancient accounts, the biggest library in the world, right there in Egypt at the time. Several creation flood stories were written before Moses. He edited it, okay, based on word-of-mouth legends. There are some older accounts of the creation story and some older accounts of the flood story than Moses. I agree. It doesn't mean they're right. Policeman knows if he arrives on a scene of an accident, the first one to tell the story may not get it right. It might be the fourth one to tell the story that actually gets it right. So just because somebody wrote the flood legend down doesn't mean their legend is a legend. Moses got the eyewitness accounts from Noah who was on the ark. This is the book of the generations of Adam. Chapter 5 is Adam signing off. Chapter 5, verse 1. So Adam actually wrote most of chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4. He was there. It was his life. He knew. Probably written on clay tablets that would be common and very permanent. They last thousands of years. These are the generations of Noah. So chapter 6, verse 9, Noah is signing off. Noah wrote chapter 5, which is the genealogy of all these people, and the first part of chapter 6. Chapter 10, these are the generations of the sons of Noah. So Noah's son, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, would have written chapter half of chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9. They were there when it happened. These are the generations of Shem. Shem continued writing a little more after that. He kept his genealogy going, okay? These are the generations of Terah. Terah wrote part of Genesis. These are the generations of Ishmael. These are the generations of Isaac. These are the generations of Esau. You read the book of Esau in the book of Genesis, chapter 36, and it's almost like this chapter doesn't fit. These are the names of the dukes that came of Esau. Well, it, that's, it's a different author writing about Esau, signed off. So Genesis chapter six is, 36 is a different author. These are the generations of Jacob. Jacob wrote part. See Henry Morris, Defender Study Bible, which we sell and I highly recommend. What are these, Sandra? They're about 100 bucks, aren't they? For 95 bucks. It's an excellent Bible. All Henry Morris footnotes at the bottom are great. Adam wrote part of Genesis. He was there. Noah wrote part. Yes, there are 10 different authors. Genesis 1 tells us there was a canopy of water overhead and water under the crust. How could anybody know that without God telling them? So they lived for 900 years. You could learn a lot. You'd have time to write a lot. And they preserved that record. Adam could have handed the record to Noah's daddy. Lamech could have known Adam. 
get the chart we make on that topic. Oh, and you can see their lifespans overlap. Noah lived long enough, and Noah's son Shem lived long enough after the flood to meet Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, to meet them personally. There are no contradictions in Genesis. You claim that there are. I'm sorry they taught you that at Princeton. I'll debate all of them, same time, one topic at a time. You give me the best three contradictions you think you know of, I'd like to see them. I disagree strongly. I think you are hurting the faith of kids who come through your class. You've written a lot of books to help destroy people's faith in God's word. I think you're going to be in trouble when you stand before God. Let's give him another minute here. It's a question, what can you trust as being anything that's reliable at all? And that's, that's one of the issues, obviously, I deal with in the course. Okay, great. On a related note, then, can I ask you, see, like you say, it's a very old book. Uh, it's from a period where records, I guess, were a lot more sparsely kept than they are today. Do we have any idea when it might have been written, who the intended audience might have been? Um, well, we have some idea about when it was written. Or I should, should say scholars have a number of ideas because scholars don't agree. <laughs> the, traditional, <laughs> the traditional view of it is, of course, that Moses wrote Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy, the, the Pentateuch, or the Torah. Uh, and Moses, if, if, if Moses lived, he would... Catch the way he throws stuff in. Moses, if he lived. There are Bible teachers all over the world doing what Bart does, trying to destroy their students' faith in the Bible by subtly sneaking those kind of things in. I want to build your faith in the Bible. This is God's Word, every letter of it. There are no contradictions. You got one, Bart? I want to see it. I disagree. I think you're either ignorant of the topic or you're lying. Okay? Call 855-BIG-DINO. I'll take you on. You, Emma loves this kind of stuff because she wants badly to doubt the Bible. She wants to get guys like this on her channel to make the Bible look bad.